Hare Krishna. So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Vai Bhav. We're on Unit 1, Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the uh, first three chapters. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namene Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhattavanda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right, so here we are, lesson five today. So, review, lesson four. Refuted demigod worship. We spent some time on these things yesterday, refuting demigod worship, and we decided that we should worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, who is fully in the mode of goodness, and we should come to the mode of pure goodness. But the demigod worship is influenced by the modes of nature. And the various kinds of avatars, we heard about the different types of avatars, particularly the, the guna avatars and, and the leela avatars who were described there in the third chapter. But there's many other avatars, there's the Manu, Manvantara avatars and the Shakya Vesha avatars and there was also the Bhutis. All right, we, so then also we heard about why Sri Krishna is Bhagavan Swayam. He is the original cause of all causes. So Ajiva Goswami gave us some very nice examples in his Krishna Samhita. And I was very happy to hear them quoted yesterday by several devotees. So very nice. All right. So here we go to into the second chapter. We want to look at this uh, important section which is there in the second chapter, which is uh, describing the progression of different levels of devotional service. All right? I hope you managed to look into that a little bit the different levels of devotion, of the progression of devotional service. Mm. Let's see here. So we have... Uh, we're on the first canto. And this is chapter number two. Oh, Krishna. Chapter number two, text number thirteen. All right. Text number thirteen. Atapum birdvija shrestha varna sram vibhagasha. Svanustitasya dharmasya samsadir haritoshanam. O best among the twice born, it is therefore concluded 
that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to caste divisions and orders of life is to please the personality of Godhead. So that was already spoken to us and you'll remember the answer to the first question of, of the sages. They wanted to know what was the ultimate good for all people, what, what was the shreya, the ultimate good for everyone and the answer was given that the ultimate good for everyone is to engage in devotional service. And so this same point is being confirmed here, that it doesn't matter whatever duties you may have in the material world, your different duties, caste divisions or orders of life, doesn't matter whether you're brahmachari, grihastha, vanaprastha, sannyas, where you're brahman, kshatri, vaishya, or sudra, but the, the, the goal of life is to please the, the personality of Godhead. That's uh, the important thing. So, Sutta Goswami was stressing this point and speaking to the sages headed by Shonaka. And he addresses Shonaka, Dvija Shrestha, the best of the twice born. So that's Shonaka Rishi being described there, right? So that's uh, one the verse. And then we jump a few verses up to number 616. And it, uh, actually Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he describes his progression of devotional service. He takes verses from 16 up to 21. And although it's only five, six verses, he has 14 different levels of uh, spiritual progress. And in this very first verse, this text number 16, he has five, he recognizes five different levels from the first verse. So <laughs> it's very interesting to read his analysis, you can find it in Burijan Prabhu's book, Unveiling the Lotus Feet. So he explains these 14 different levels. Uh, we're not going to look at it in so much depth, but we do want to understand something of the progression which is there in these verses. So, Sushushrosha Dadanashya Vasudev Kataruchi by serving those devotees who are free of sin, great service is done. By such service, one gains an affinity for hearing the message of Vasudev, right? Vasudev Kata, Ruchi, Ruchi, that taste, now you should understand that Ruchi, that is not referring to the ruchi which we identify in the nine different levels of bhakti. You, you will all know the nine different levels of bhakti, beginning with shraddha, ado shraddha, tata, sadhu, sangha, tabhajana, kriya, anartha, nivriti, tato, nishta, ruchi, sat, uh, then asakti, bhava and prema. So that ruchi, that is different from the ruchi mentioned here. This ruchi, this is a preliminary taste which is achieved by, by the mercy of uh, the orders of, serving the orders of the spiritual teachers, by, the, by serving the devotees. We get a preliminary taste, but that is not the actual taste which is above anartha navriti. We haven't gone through an art of vritti yet. We still have to go through that. So this verse begins like this. Sushrushro uh, shraddhanashya. One has to be engaged in hearing, uh, right? By serving the devotees who are free of sin, great service is done. By such service you get affinity, you get, a, you get an attraction for hearing the message of Vasudeva. We often find in the beginning difficult to hear, difficult to focus the mind, right? 
maybe even right now you're having difficulty to focus the mind, the mind is wandering and you're thinking, how long is this going to take? We hope we're going to finish soon. Well, how do we get more taste? So it's described here, mahat sevam, by serving the devotees, the punya tirta nishevana. Tirta, tirta doesn't only mean a holy place, but it also refers to the spiritual teachers. Just like we had Bhakti Tirtha Swami, right? So Tirtha, Tirtha is the spiritual teachers, Punya Tirtha Nishevana, by serving those people who are free from sin, then great service is done and we get a taste for hearing the message of Vasudev, this Vasudev Katha. Right? And then the next verse goes on to describe what is the result of that hearing. Hmm. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Radhyanta Stohi Apadrani Vudunoti Suritsatam. Another important verse. It's describing how Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul in the hearts of all living entities and is the benefactor of the truthful devotee, he cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. All right, so note the connection with the previous verse. The previous verse was describing to de how we develop the taste. We develop the taste for hearing by serving the devotees. Serving the devotees, we develop a taste to hear the Bhagavatam. There's the person Bhagavatam and the book Bhagavatam. So the person Bhagavatam can help us to develop a taste for hearing the book Bhagavatam. By their mercy, they can bring us in. And w with the result of their mercy, we develop an urge to hear. So that urge to hear is described here in this text number 17, that because we've developed the urge to hear about Krishna, so Lord Krishna in the heart cleanses the desire for material enjoyment. Right? Within the heart, of course, we have a lot of dirty things. We have a lot of anarthas. Abhadrani. Abhadrani means the inauspicious things. So these, uh, these things are removed by hearing the glories of the Lord. So this is the next stage and then after that, then we go on to a verse which probably, Hare Krishna, can you hear me okay? Yes Maharaj. Yes Maharaj. Yes Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Internet's a bit unstable I understand. Okay, so we go on to text 18, Nasta Prayesh Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtati Naishtaki, right? Naishtaki Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki This is the result. Uh, Lord Krishna is cleansing the desires from the heart and the result of that cleansing of the desires of the heart we develop more taste. So, text 18 describes, by regular attendance in classes on Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. So, 
you can see that the result of cleansing the heart, it's mentioned cleansing the heart, not fully, but almost, uh, almost completely destroyed. What Prabhupada gave one lecture, he spoke about it, he said, just like if you have uh, got rid of 75% of the anarthas, then almost destroyed. And so you come to that stage of naishtiki, uh, nishta, steady, you become steady in your Krishna consciousness. And because you've got rid of the anarthas, the different anarthas which are there, Remember these different anarthas or things like, uh, well, Kama. Hmm? yes? Kama, Krodha, Logo. Well, those are not exactly, the, of course, those are definitely anarthas, but there's, there's many other things, subtle, subtle things. Just like in the beginning, uh, in the Madhurya Kadambini, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes six different kinds of anarthas. And the first one which she describes is uh, enthusiasm due to pride. Just like in the beginning, someone's a very new devotee and we think, this is easy. I can do this. This is very easy. I'm not, this is not trouble for me at all. And we're thinking like that. We're actually thinking, oh, Krishna consciousness, no, no big deal. Very simple. And, and we're just new devotees. We've just begun. We don't realize what we have to go through. But that kind of enthusiasm in the beginning is due to our pride, or you could call it false ego, but that's often there in the beginning. And then later on, there's also other, there's, there's of course offenses, and you, anarchists due to offenses, like in Seva Aparad, or in Japa Nama Parad or Vaishnava Parad even can be there. And so these things, they're, they're all, all different kinds of anarthas. And then attachments to material facilities, particularly one thing is as we become more, uh, maybe more senior in our practice of Krishna consciousness, we're often given more facilities and we become attached to enjoying these facilities. We become attached to the, the fame and the prestige and the, uh, you know, we become attached to the honour and respect which is given to us. So that's also very, that's an, one anartha also, which is not helping our Krishna consciousness. We have to be careful of these kind of things. So you can see the anarthas are subtle as well as gross. And we have to remove all of these different anarthas in order to really clean the heart. And so the, it's mentioned here, the heart is cleansed almost to nil. The, the dirty things in the heart are destroyed almost completely. Uh, we need the mercy of devotees also. That's very important. If you get the mercy of the devotees, then that can help to remove a lot of dirty things from the heart. So taking the shelter of senior Vaishnavas, and even though we may be a Vaishnava or we may think we're important or a senior devotee ourselves, we should always have somebody who's at least our equal and even more than us and then we can get a lot of mercy and a lot of purification from their contact. So Nasta Prayesh Abhadreshu, again Abhadreshu, inauspiciousness is removed by Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, by serving the Bhagavat, by serving the person Bhagavat and the book Bhagavat. So they're, they're not different, the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat. We want to take advantage of that and that will bring us to this Nishta, that stage of being steady in our Krishna consciousness it will get us through the anarthas and we come to that stage of nishta. And then what comes after that, after we get to that stage of nishta? So then uh, the next verse describes that. 
text 19. Tadarajastamo bhava kama lobo dayaschaye chita eter anabidam stitam sadve prasidati. So this is describing about the removal of the modes of nature. Prabhu was mentioning about the lust and the anger and the greed. Yes, these things have to be removed because they are due to the influence of the modes of nature, passion and ignorance. So, as soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance such as lust, desire and hankering disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness and he becomes completely happy. So he, th this is a sign that one is actually progressing from the nishta stage. You see, he's, he's got rid of the anartas and he's overcome the influence of the modes of nature the modes of passion and the modes of ignorance. He's come out of these modes and he's come to be established in the mode of goodness. Titam sattve prasidati. He's become established in the modes of goodness. So this is a very nice condition because he'll be, when he's fixed in the mode of goodness, he'll be actually satisfied. Of course, a brahmana will be, should be in the mode of goodness. So we want to be more than a brahmana. We want to go on from the position of the brahmana to become a Vaishnava. And that means to come to the stage of Shuddha Sattva, to transcend even the mode of goodness and to come to the stage of pure goodness. So we, this getting through the modes of nature, coming up to the mode of goodness, and then going on from the mode of goodness into the mode of pure goodness. So text 20 describes, evam prasana manaso bhavavad, bhavavad bhakti yogita bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangasya jayate. Right? Thus established in the mode of goodness. The man whose mind is enlivened by contact with devotional service to the Lord. He gains positive scientific knowledge. Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, right? The Vigyanam, the Tattva Vigyanam, scientific knowledge of Bhagavan. So he's gaining positive scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. Mukta Sangasya Jayate. Liberated from all material association. So he has to come up to the stage of unalloyed goodness. This is describing the stage of unal pure goodness, Shuddha Sattva. And then you, you're, we're seeing uh, he's actually getting perception of the Lord. That is Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam, actual scientific realization or vision actually of the Lord. So these different stages are all mentioned here. We'll have a little quote from Srila Prabhupada. All right, someone like to read for us? Bhaktiya Shrut Grihitaya. Bhaktiya means you have to execute the devotional service under the direction of a proper spiritual master. Bhaktiya Shrut Grihitaya. And you have to hear about Krishna. Two things must go on. If Just like here you will find the Archa Vigra, worshipping the deity is going on. But if simply this thing going go on, because none of us are expert, there must be Shrut Grahitaya. We must hear about Krishna also. Two things must go on parallel lines. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.10, Bombay, December 28, 1972. I'll just read for you the translation of this text number 10 from the second chapter. 
it's a powerful verse, Sutta Goswami speaking strongly against materialistic activities. He says, life's desire should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life of, or, or self-preservation, since a human being is meant for inquiry about the Absolute Truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works, all right? We, we shouldn't be worrying about wealth, economic prosperity. We just want self-preservation. If you can just maintain ourselves, that's enough. What life is actually meant for is to understand the Absolute Truth. So you may have a lot of money, you may have a good economic situation, but if we don't understand the goal of life, if, we're, if we have never inquired about the Absolute Truth, then it's all useless labor, a wasted life. Hmm? Yes, somebody please read. Kirti Tavyastra, you are hearing about God. Now you have to spread it. Kirti Tavyastra, not that. Oh, I have known God. That's all right. Let me be satisfied. No, you must preach. That is another business. Because people are ignorant. They do not know what is God. They are manufacturing God. They are accepting some rascal as God. So what is real God? You must preach. Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 40, Los Angeles, October, August 17, 1972. So text number 14 reads, Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. So, Prabhupada is stressing to the devotees there in Los Angeles the importance of preaching. You must preach. It's so much need for people to be educated. They, no, people didn't get that education. And because they didn't get that education, everyone's suffering. So those of us, we're, we're fortunate, we've, we've received this education. We have to be willing to share it, to give it to others. It's important, it's pleasing to Prabhupada when we preach. Riddhi antas tohi, remember the verse? Nasta prayesh vabhanshun bhagavati. Radhyanta stohi apadrani vidunoti surit satam. Oh, go back, go back, just a minute. Srinvatam svakata krishna punya shravana kirtana. Radhyanta stohi apadrani vidunoti surit satam. So, Lord Krishna, the super soul within the hearts of all living entities, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment. From who? From those who relish his message, which in itself is virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Text number 17. Prabhupada's statement. Can someone read? When Krishna sees that this living entity is not sincere to hear about me, he helps Hridhi because he's there. You haven't got to find out somewhere else. He's here. Hridhi Antos Thohi. So he's also, as soon as he sees, this living entity is now a little serious about hearing about me, he helps. He helps you. I cannot get out of these dirty 
things by my own endeavor. That is not possible, but Krishna helps. Okay. A little difficult to pick up everything you said, Masaji. The mic is not so clear. All right, but the dirty things in the heart. As soon as Krishna sees that we are a little serious to hear, then he helps. So we have to, we just have to become serious. Before that we heard about how to develop the taste, right? We, if we don't have taste in the beginning, then we do service. We serve the devotees and gradually we will develop the taste by serving the devotees. Just the example is there, Narada Muni, how he was serving the mendicants who had come to his home. So Prabhupada said, you don't have to go to Himalayas to find God. He's here. He's in our heart. He's within everything. We just have to get rid of all the dirty things from the heart. Then we can properly understand how the Lord is here with us. Chita eter anavidam sthitam sarve prasiddhati. Right, text number 20. Evam prasanam manaso bhagavad bhakti yogata. Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana Mukta Oh no. What's this verse again? Cheta Etera Navidam Sta Tadara Jastamo Bhava Kama Lobo Dayas Chai. Cheta Eter Navidam Stitam Sarve Prasidati. When we get free from the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance, then we will come to the mode of goodness. Right. Kama tadarajas tamo bhava kama lobo dayaschaye cheta ete renavidam stitam sattve prasidati. So becoming fixed, stitam sattve prasidati, fixed in goodness, then we will understand what is real satisfaction. But we have to get free from the modes of nature. We have to get free from the tamas and rajas. Rajas is animal life, and uh, rather tamas is, tamas is an animal life, and rajas is simply materialistic life. People, working people, ordinary people, common people, mostly they're in the mode of passion. They have a job, they're working, you know, they may be living in a nice standard or they may be on a more frugal standard, but generally it's an influence of the mode of passion. But we want to come above these modes and come to the mode of goodness, and then even transcend the mode of goodness, where the mind is no longer affected. So then you're fixed, fully fixed in goodness, when the mind is no longer disturbed. When we come to the stage of uh, nishta, then sometimes the mind will go, but we have enough strength, we can bring it back. But if we can get beyond nishta, ruchi, asakti, come to the stage of asakti, then we'll be so strong in Krishna consciousness that even if the mind goes, we'll bring it back automatically without thinking. Without, without making an effort by ourselves, automatically the mind will come away from material thoughts. So that is the nature of asati, that we're, we're really fixed in goodness. Prabhupada explains here from a lecture on this verse, text number 19, without coming to the platform of sattva gun, or Brahminical qualification. One cannot make any advance in spiritual life. Therefore, in our Krishna consciousness movement, we first of all bring anyone to
to the platform of Brahmana. And Prabhupada's making a point, we bring anyone to the platform of Brahmana. It's not a question of what caste you're born in or anything. We bring everyone, we want to bring all the devotees up to the Brahmanical platform. They, of course, they, they, they're not, they may not be Brahmanas by qualification or by occupation, but we try to bring them up to that platform of Brahmana and go on to become devotees, to come to the Vaishnava platform, to transcend even goodness. So we have to come up to the mode of goodness, that's the Brahminical qualification, and then make advancement to the transcendental platform, pure goodness, above the mode of goodness. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada explains further, simply to become free from the modes of ignorance and passion is not sufficient. One must be free from the modes of goodness also, this so-called goodness. Then you come to the transcendental platform. That is called sarvopadi vinirmuktam. Sarvopadi vinirmuktam tat paratvena nirmalam. Sarvopadi vinirmuktam. Sarvopadi. Upadi meaning designations. So this is another definition of pure devotional service which you will come across when you study or you've already studied of course Bhakti Shastri, so nectar of devotion, you remember this, sarvupadi vinir muktam. When you give up all of these designations, all of these upadis, we designate ourselves. I am Brahmana or I am sannyasi, or I am guru, or I am wa woman, or, like we designate ourselves, so many material designations. But when we come to the transcendental platform, we, we give up all of these kind of designations. The spirit soul is not brahmana or kshatriya or vaishya or sudra. The spirit soul is not a, 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 a kshatriya or a vaishya or a or a whatever a, shat, a brahmana or a sudra spirit soul is the servant of krishna so we have to be fixed on the transcendental platform so that is the meaning of sarvopadi vinir muktam to give up all the designations get rid of all of this this ignorance this upadis which envelop us which cover us and we're identify ourselves in so many ways. So Lord Krishna is explaining this level of spiritual advancement in text 19. Get free from the mode of passion and ignorance and come to the transcendental platform. And then become fully established in the mode of goodness and become actually happy. All right, so we're going to look at the different levels of devotional service as they're described. So we begin here from text number 12. Touch Shraddhadana Munayo, right? This is the first level describing faith. We have to have some faith in the beginning. Tatsradhadana munayo jnana vairagya yuktaya pasyanti atmani chatmanam bhakti shruta grihitaya bhakti shruta grihitaya we just said Prabhupada was quoting that bhakti shruta grihitaya so that, that verse reads that the seriously inquisitive student well equipped with knowledge and detachment realizes the absolute truth by rendering devotional service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedanta Sutra. So this is text number 12. This is the beginning of his spiritual progress. He's a seriously inquisitive student and he's got some knowledge and he's got some detachment, he's going to develop detachment, 
He's got some knowledge and detachment, but it will develop as he goes on. But he has, he, he's, he's heard something from Vedanta Sutra. So he's come to devotional service. And this is the beginning, that he has some faith. And then the next thing, after faith, then Sadhu Sangha, association with devotees. Right? We have a little faith in the beginning, but it's difficult for us to hear. Hearing the Vedanta, it's not so absorbing, a lot of philosophy, maybe some difficulty to focus the mind and fix the mind. How to develop a taste for hearing? So, text number 16 is quoted as describing Sadhu Sangha, the association of devotees. Syanmahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Neshevanat. Right? Susrush Rosha Dadanashya Vasudev Kataruchi. Syanmahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Neshevanat. By serving the devotees who are free from sin, great service is done. And by such service, we get a, an affinity for hearing the message of Vasudev. So we develop a taste for hearing. Then the next stage, bhajana kriya. We have to practice hearing. Srinvatam svakata krishna. Lord Krishna, super soul within the hearts of all living entities, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from those who relish the message. So this is bhajana kriya, cleaning the heart, getting rid of the anartas, by hearing about Krishna. This is Bhajana Kriya. And after Bhajana Kriya, next stage is, who knows? Anartanavriti. Yes, Anartanavriti. So that is described in text 18. So you can see the progression 12, 16, 17, 18. Text 18 describing Anartanavriti. Nashta Prahesh Vabhadreshu, by regularly hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and serving the devotees, all that is inauspicious within the heart becomes eradicated almost to nil. And loving service to the glorious Lord, who is praised by transcendental songs, becomes established in the heart. Hmm? Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki, right? Naishtaki. So here, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki, the same verse, two levels are described, Anartha Navriti and Nishta. Because the first part of the verse was describing Nasta Prashva Badrishu, removing the Abhadra, removing the inauspiciousness from the heart. And then the verse goes on. Uh, the, it becomes, the dirty things become eradicated almost to nil, and loving service to the glorious Lord, who is praised by transcendental hymns, becomes established as an irrevocable fact. So, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki, his devotion becomes Nishta, Naishtaki Nishta, his, he becomes actually fixed, he becomes steady in, on that platform. And after that, then, we have ruchi and asakti from the verse number 19. Tada rajas tamo bhava kama lobo dayas chayi chita iter navidam stitam sadve prasidati. So stitam sadve prasidati, develop some taste and asakti, complete attachment to Krishna, to hearing about Krishna, detached from all the material. And then text number 20, prasanna manaso, bhava, bhava bhakti, the perfection, you're actually going to see Krishna, you're going to develop love for Krishna. And evam prasanna manaso, bhagavad Bhakti Yogata, Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana Mukta Sangha Shajayati. Right? Thus established in the mode of unalloyed goodness, 
then the man becomes rejuvenated by devotional service and he gains scientific knowledge of the Lord. That tattva vigyan, this is prema. He's actually going to have vision, he's going to see the Lord. So you can see the progression from these verses, how we can develop up to the topmost level of prema bhakti. It's all described here in these verses. All right. So we ask you now, what is the role of Prabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam in his mission? And here, we're we going to do it like this. Well, how many people are here today? Yes, how many? Yes, how many? 33. 36. 33, Maharaj. 33. Okay. You same as uh, yesterday. 33. So we will have uh, groups of, we'll have, we want four groups. How, how to do it? <laughs> Maybe we'll have groups of four. Eh? Four people, then we can have eight groups. Eight fours are 32 and one 33. One person can go in the group. So we'll have eight groups of four. One group of five. And the first two groups, well, Group one, two, three, four, right? It's mentioned here, one, two, three, four. And then group five will do also preface. And group six will do one, one, four. Group seven, one, one, sixteen. And group eight, one, two, five. Is that all right? Everyone remember your group number? <laughs> Hello, I, Hare Krishna, which group I am, I don't know. Prabhuji, Maharaj, I don't know in which group I am. I am, I am assign, assigning the groups. I'll just start the breakout oh. rooms. Maharaj, uh, how much do you want the production time to be? Ten minutes. Okay, Maharaj.
Hare Krishna. Everyone's back now? Not yet, Maharaj. Not yet, Maharaj. They're just returning. We have around 27 participants. Okay. 28. Okay. Yeah, around 32 are back, so maybe we can start, Maharaj. All right. So let's hear from group number one, who were doing the preface. Would you like to tell us something about Prabhupada's, uh, the role of Prabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam in his mission? Or maybe we could start with group number five. Who's group five? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, myself, Mukesh Gohar Prabhu, Padma Radha Mataji and Radha Pada Das Prabhuji, we represent group five. Okay, Prabhu, would you like to tell us something about what you discussed on Prabhupada's role? Yes, based on, Maharaj, uh, based on preface. Yes, based on preface, uh, we will uh, each one of us will uh, speak one point. So I would request Nikesh Goel Prabhuji to start, and then I will speak, and then Padma Radha Mataji will uh, explain our point. Okay. Hare Krishna. So in the preface, it is it is given like disparity in human societies due to lack of principles in a godless civilization. So. Tilaprabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam plays a very important role, like uh, it is given there is a need of clue as how to human society can become one in peace, friendship and prosperity with a common cause. So uh, like Srila Prabhupada taught us that we are not this body, we are soul. And uh, it also helps, Srimad Bhagavatam also helps us to re-establish our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord. So this is one of the points that we discussed, like uh, how it helps everyone to come under at one place and to, like we can say, have a place where we can pu purify ourselves and re-establish our relationship with the Supreme. Thank you, Prabhu. So the next point uh, we would like to explain is about the uh, what Srila Prabhupada mentions in the preface is re-spiritualization of the entire human society, you know, um, and also about uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam's role in uh, doing that and, uh, and and helping the human society to go beyond what they are currently looking for. So uh, Srila Prabhupada's mission was to re-spiritualize everyone because of the godless nature that the current uh, human society is going through. Uh, they're forgetting their uh, relationship with the Supreme and they are uh, you know, uh, headlong busy in uh, creating material comforts and material necessities. Uh, but that is again, you know, there is, Prabhupada mentioned in the preface that gives a pinch to them that still there are uh, endless quarrels or small, small things that tells us that the, the economical growth and that the uh, technological growth, whatever the current materialistic growth that current human society is going through is not helping them really because they are losing on their spiritual aspect and Srila Prabhupada here stresses that re-spiritualization of the entire human society is possible through Srimad Bhagavatam which is a very very authoritative scripture in his preface also he tries to emphasize that this is a very authoritative scripture uh, which is given by Vyasadeva who has given the com this is again a commentary on Vedanta Sutra he mentions that which will help human beings not only to understand the source of entire universe but also to realize and understand what is their relationship with the Supreme and how they can attain the perfection in their life. You know, the real happiness that they are looking for. So that is the role of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mataji, next, uh, Padma Radha Mataji, you can explain. Thank you, Prabhu. So Maharaj, so another last point, what we discussed uh, was that the Srimad Bhagavatam is actually a, um, a talk between uh, Maharaj uh, Parikshit and Sukhdev Goswami, which is a very practical application uh, for today's people that everybody wants 
if not everybody but many of us would like to know uh, what is the role and what to hear what to chant what, uh, what to remember what to worship yes at the time of death but in relation to pro uh, Prabhupada's mission we don't know when we are going to die Parikshit Maharaj was lucky that he knew that in seven days he was going to die but we don't know when we are going to die so his mission was to to, to spread uh, the awareness, as as Prabhu discussed, this, we are not the body, we are the soul, and working towards it by by reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mariji. Yes. Okay, is that everyone from Group One? A uh, Group set Five? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Can we go back to Group Number One? We are also working on the preface. Yes, Maharaj. Hi, Vishnu Maharaj. Um, I'll be presenting on behalf of group number one. So, um, as we see in preface, um, Prabhupada mentions that human society is uh, broader than in the Middle Ages, and the ideals of spiritual communism, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, are more or less on the oneness of entire human society. So, uh, many people are externally putting efforts for the oneness of society by creating various types of isms, which Prabhupada used to refer as well. Uh, in, in, in Isha Upanishad as well, he mentioned in detail about this. But how Srimad Bhagavatam defeats all of this and it ultimately, it, it actually leads to the oneness of entire human society. The rest of the isms might not, but Srimad Bhagavatam uh, would be able to do that. And this was one of the purpose of Srila Prabhupada to bring the members in a society towards Krishna. So um, uh, this is one of the purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam in Prabhupada's, mood, uh, in Prabhupada's mission. The other one um, which was highlighted in preface is that, uh, as we know that in human society, there's a lack of godless, because of lack of principles, there's a godless civilization. And for such godless civilization, Prahlad Maharaj himself used Bhagavatam to change the demonic face of society. So Srimad Bhagavatam is capable of changing even the demons of society. So definitely the disparity in human society, which is due to the dog, lack of principles, can be uh, like uh, uh, can be changed by the study of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hence, Prabhupada always inspired the preachers to uh, that Srimad Bhagavatam should be introduced in schools and colleges. So Prabhupada used to tell that there that you are a Brahman, but there are many Brahmans in the universities of America waiting to be rescued. They are, they are born in the families of uh, non-veg eaters, but they are actually Brahmans. So that's why he introduced Srimad Bhagavatam in the schools and colleges. And it was himself, like it was recommended by Prahlad Maharaj um, himself. Also, one of the, uh, one of the, um, another purpose is that we know Prabhupada wanted to establish supremacy of Vedic literature and wanted to establish supremacy of Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead by a systematic propagation of knowledge. So Prabhupada, uh, so we know that Prabhupada mentions in preface that Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the definition of ultimate source and is a bona fide commentary on Vedanta Sutra by author Vyasdev himself. So all the disparities, all the confusion about Vedanta Sutra is finished by the study of Srimad Bhagavatam, which was the purpose of Srila Prabhupada to establish supremacy of Krishna and uh, so that people don't get confused about who is the actual Lord and how he should be worshipped. At last, Prabhupada mentions the, uh, the shlok from Srimad Bhagavatam where he mentioned that, on the other hand, the literature is full of description of transcendental glories of name, fame, form, and pastime. And just by reading it, by it is meant for to bring a revolution in impious life of misdirected civilization. So how so we know by this that Prabhupada always empowered preachers to use Srimad Bhagavatam because by the study of Srimad Bhagavatam, impious life uh, of misdirected civilization can be brought on the right path. And uh, like one of the goals and mood and missions of Prabhupada was to establish this society where everyone can focus to get back to, to serve each other and to serve Krishna who is the ultimate Lord. So I, this is what all we discussed. So, so are you telling me that uh, young children should also begin to study Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, that day I think in class you were only giving that example that there was this Mataji who used to homeschool her children based on Prabhupada books. And they went on to get, you know, in privileged universities. They didn't go to external schools, just Prabhupada books and study of Bhagavatam. So just by study of Bhagavatam and, you know, other books, um, one can also succeed in material life as well as in spiritual life. 
So th this example, Maharaj, you only gave in the previous half classes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, all right. So we'll go ahead. Let's hear now group number group, group number six. Right, group group number six dealing with uh, the first verse or oh, the fourth verse of the first chapter of the first canto. Group number six and with the like so Yes. Maharaj, in this uh, text one point four, uh, it is seen that the Naimisharanya sages are performing sacrifices. So, and we are discussing about the role of Srimad Bhagavatam in Prabhupada's mission. Prabhupada is saying that in the in this today's world, everyone is speaking of oneness, and uh, but uh, everyone is uh, running after their own satisfaction. No one is thinking of uh, uh, glorifying the Lord, or no one is uh, interested uh, interested in uh, hearing about Lord Lord's glorification. But uh, the uh, but the devotees of the Lord, they are only interested in the satisfaction of themselves only not uh, uh, but not after their own pleasures like in uh, shrimad bhagavad uh, in the bhagavad gita 3.9 it is said that jagartha karmano hatra lokaya karma bandhana tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara so uh, here Prabhupada is saying that uh, uh, it is said that anything performed in the material world for any reason other than for pleasure of Lord Vishnu causes further bondage for the performer. It is enjoyed, therefore, that all acts must be for performed sacrificially for the satisfaction of Vishnu and his devotee. So, uh, in this uh, in this congregation uh, in this age, congregational chanting and studying of Srimad Bhagavatam is the only way uh, by which uh, we can. Uh, by which we can, uh, what to say, uh, we can protect ourselves uh, from uh, from running uh, behind uh, from running behind material world. So that is uh, that's why here the sages are performing sacrifices only for the pleasure of Lord, not for themselves. Okay, so how does this relate to Srila Prabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam? Prabhupada's mission in writing Srimad like, Bhagavatam. Uh, like Prabhupada is saying that the leaders of people are very much anxious to live in peace and friendship, but they have no information of the simple method of hearing the glories of the Lord. Uh, the, these uh, foolish leaders want to completely deny the existence of the Lord. They have no eyes to see that their attempts at peace and friendship are failing. But here is the hint to get over the hurdle. If we want actual peace, then we must open the road to understand this, uh, understanding the Supreme Lord Krishna and glorify Him for His virtuous activities as depicted in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. And so we're going to have all the politicians have to do bhakti by bab before they become parliament yes, members, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Maharaji. All right, let, let's hear group number two. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yes, Maharaj. So, in this uh, verse, it is mentioned that uh, sages uh, headed by Sage Shonak, they were assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. So, um, the this assembly was for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. Prabhupada also has the same mission, that is satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. So uh, in the purport, it starts with, so Prabhupada says that this is the main topic of this great literature. Um, and then it is mentioned that this can be a satisfaction of um, Vishnu. There are four points that are, that are mentioned in the last paragraph of the purport that uh, one is congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord, which has to be established to wake up the uh, souls of uh, like mod modern materialistic society, which is detached from its relation to the Supreme Lord. So that is second point, to wake up the modern materialistic society. Third is uh, to scientifically present the teachings of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And fourth is uh, to bring about real peace. So Shla Prabhupada wants to establish real peace and prosperity 
uh, through Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, it can be uh, real peace and prosperity can be established uh, when everyone, when Vishnu is satisfied. And this is it is mentioned that forgetful men do not know the right path for peace and prosperity. However, the sages know, know it well. And therefore, for the good of all men, they are always anxious to perform acts which may bring about peace in the world. They are sincere friends to all living entities and at the risk of great personal inconvenience, they are always engaged in the service of the Lord for good of all people. So, Shri Prabhupada underwent this personal inconvenience for good of all people. And then uh, he established Lord, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam establishes Lord Vishnu as the Supreme. So, Lord Vishnu is just like a great tree. And all others, including the demigods, men, Siddhas, Charanas, Vidyadharas, and other living entities are like branches, twigs, and leaves of that tree. By pouring water on the root of the tree, all the parts of the tree are automatically nourished. Only those branches and leaves which are detached cannot be so satisfied. Detached branches and leaves dry up gradually, despite all watering attempts. Similarly, human society, when it is detached from the personality of God, like detached branches and leaves, is not capable of being watered, and one attempting to do so is simply wasting his energy and resources. So, Srila Prabhupada's mission is to bring all those detached branches back to um, service of Lord Vishnu, which is a very well established by Srimad Bhagavatam. So Thank you. Can you give me some examples of these detached branches in the modern time, in, the, in, in, in terms of your own personal experience? Can you think, can you give me some examples of branches yes. which are detached? Yes, Maharaj. So we can see so many, uh, so many of us before coming to Krishna consciousness, we were all detached. We were in our own lives and we were studying science and we were, um, you know, pursuing our uh, different um, you know, paths. But uh, once we came in contact with the uh, Srila Prabhupada's mission and uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam, we got a chance to understand who Lord Vishnu is, who Krishna is. And uh, uh, like we, were, we ourselves were detached. But now, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we are back into the service of Krishna. We are trying, at least we are trying to be back into the service of Krishna. For example, in uh, West, when Srila Prabhupada went, there were so many people who, uh, you know, in, in toxic, uh, they were in intoxication and all the other uh, habits and even in India. So everywhere, uh, but Shri Prabhupada brought them back. These were all detached branches, but they, uh, Prabhupada brought them back through Shri, his uh, Shriman Bhagavatam and his teachings. They came back to the service of Lord Vishnu. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj Thank you very Thank much. You much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. All right, well, then we'll go on to group number uh, seven, right? And group number seven is going to speak on the first chapter, text number 16. Hi, I'm Chai Krishna. Here group seven, we're discussing 1.1.16. In 1.1.16, it was described about how this material world, and especially in the age of Kali, how horrible it is and how it's full, full of quarrel and vicious fights, all sorts of horrible things. And the people and its leaders, they realize this and they don't want that. They want to live in uh, peace and friendship, but they don't know how to, they don't know the answer, how, how to live in actual peace. So then Srila Prabhupada's mission was to give that answer so that we can live in actual peace. The answer was Srimad Bhagavatam. focus on him and then we get actual peace. This is such an easy method as well and contrast to other methods of trying to get actual peace and it's also very effective. So that was his mission to give actual peace to the world. Are we just looking for a formula for peace? It sounds like it's, you know, you know, many other peace organizations, you know, you have United Nations and things like this, you know, are we just trying to compete with them? To give peace? Is that just simply the goal? It could incite some people to join, but once they join, they can realize a higher goal of to become Krishna and becoming, serving the Lord, pleasing Him, becoming His pure devotee. Yes, in Prabhupada's time, there were many young people. They were also, you know, we would, we would 
even they would we would they would be protesting and they would say ban the bomb and you know we want peace and and they say make love not war <laughs> you know this kind of thing and so the idea what what is peace you know people have their own their own speculations about a peaceful world but how can you have peace so long as you're killing the cows so you know just it, it, we have to understand that the difference in presenting krishna consciousness it is not just simply a peace movement but we want to we want to give the the real the actual standard of uh what is peaceful existence based on spiritual knowledge, understanding how the Lord is in the heart of all living entities. We cannot have peace in the world so long as there's killing of animals, slaughterhouses are being maintained. So how can we expect to have peace? So we have a long way to go in preaching to people what is the real meaning of peace. And certainly when we read Srimad Bhagavatam, then it's a whole new concept. We actually come to the transcendental platform to understand peace on the higher level, not just simply in terms of mundane material vision, not just some kind of uh, speculative philosophy, but actual peace based on controlling the mind and senses and understanding the presence of God in ev everywhere, in everything. Of course, we have the peace formula in Bhagavad Gita, so that Bhagavad Gita also gives a primary definition of peace there, but that is much more expanded in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay? So we'll go ahead and then we have still group number, group number eight, is it? Who's next? Yeah. Group number three. What, what group number, Prabhu? Three, group number three. Three? Yes. Prabhu. Oh, okay, Prabhu, yes, group number three, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, so uh, we have to present on uh, the sloka 1.1.16 1 uh, and uh, he, he, here we will, uh, we discussed about like if they talk about this sloka we can divide into four sections and we will find the relevance. So first is, uh, in the sloka says that Syan Mahata Sevya Vipra, that is service to the great devotee. Now. Uh, Super says that in this present world, uh, it is a world of a uh, taste, and where instead of serving uh, uh, everybody, uh, our leaders are required to serve. They were they always want to be on media. So since they are not uh, uh, God conscious, they are more self-centered rather than uh, uh, serving others. So that is where this uh, Simad Bhagavatam talks about that. If we uh, do all our activities keeping uh, Krishna at the heart, uh, at the center, then we will uh, uh, develop a real tendency of serving others rather than uh, serving ourselves on sense enjoyment. Then second uh, part, it talks about uh, Suresho Sraddha Nasya, that is hearing with care and attention. So in, in, in the age of Kalyuk, nobody wants to listen and everybody wants to speak. Yeah. And, 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 and so that is where the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, emphasize about uh, uh, Sravanam uh, uh, gives a, a, a very high importance because until unless you, you do not hear, uh, you cannot understand the situation. So in practical world solving the problem, it is more important to hear others rather than always uh, speaking and self-imposing on others. Then third aspect, it talks about Punya Tirtha Nisvena, serving those who are freed of all vices. So in, in the present age of Kali Yuga, Prabhupada say that everybody is full of, uh, full of vices, uh, uh, all these uh, 
great last mad matsya so simad bhagavatam talk about it is not only uh, the external purifications but purifications from inside so once uh, the purification takes place from inside then only the actual disease can be addressed and lastly i talk about vasudeva katha ruchi so instead of uh, developing the uh, interest on material things where it is more centered about the sense enjoyment uh, we, we are uh, shrimad bhagavatam talk about the uh, uh, serving the lord and and and, and uh, uh, developing the ruchi for, uh, for 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 the lord so in so in, in that case uh, 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 the tendency for, uh, for for sense enjoyment and exploitation in, internal animosity and greed all will control and uh, and that is what as you uh, maharaj rightly mentioned that propad used to say that uh, iskon is the true you, you know because the people across the world are part of uh, the missions like presently what we see the war between ukraine and russia now the thing we have a large devotee both in ukraine as well as russia and and here simad bhagavatam talk about uh, serving others rather than uh, grabbing uh, others uh, uh, resources for their own sense uh, in, in enjoyment so overall this Uh, uh, this uh, in the light of simat uh, bhagavatam uh, it can uh, lead the world in a much more peaceful uh, fashion where uh, uh, the interest of all the humanities can be well taken uh, care of where the exploitation of uh, resources will be minimal and we can have together we can have a, a, a happy life with a purpose not to serve the interest uh, self interest and uh, sensual happiness but for look for larger happiness and uh, and where the krishna is at the center of it and and we can go for instead of sense enjoyment uh, like uh, serving the humanity and together serving the lord and uh, and and, and uh, achieve lasting peace uh, our uh, other uh, colleague would like to mention that we discussed probably so ಪ್ರಭುಕ್ಟರ್ uh that is one is that uh, uh regarding the questions answers question and answer is related to god krishna and the welfare of the world and and uh, what kind of question can satisfy the self and the purport purport of uh, in the first paragraph uh, purport described the uh, that uh, the supremacy of the lord uh, as the personal to god or absolute truth and he give reference to bhagavad gita chapter 15 15 and uh, in the so in that uh, part right that uh, the question that pertaining to krishna are the sum and substance of all the very inquiries so the vision of shri krishna prabhu shri bhagavadam is to establish this uh, part, part of that uh, establishing krishna is the sum and substance of all the vedic so that uh, we we don't need to go and read any other vedic literatures just by reading shri bhagavatam we can understand the purpose of the vedas uh, a second uh, part is that uh, uh, there's so many different type of question and answers but then ultimately uh, the, the satisfaction of the soul can only be obtained by question and answer on the subject of krishna and the mission of propart shrima bauda is to establish that simply by reading and understanding shrima bauda we are able to satisfy ourselves in a transcendental mode and that the last point was the on the third paragraph one should learn the shrima bauda and make an all round solution to all problems pertaining to social political and religious matters Shri Mahabharata and Krishna are the sum total of all the things and 
this actually uh, fulfill the purpose of ISKCON number one, the system to systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and to educate all people in the techniques of spiritual life in order to check the imbalance of values in life and to achieve real unity and peace in the world. So, uh, by, by having this smart bhagavad we can solve all this problem in this material world, give a spiritual uh, so, a solution to all material problem, either social, political, and or religious matter. So th this is the main reason why it's the Prabhupada uh, Bhavadam uh, play the role that Shiva Bhavadam role uh, uh, play in this uh, society actually at large. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Okay. You know, as a college lecturer, but are, have you been able to introduce Srimad Bhagavatam in the college there? Uh, we have uh, distributed uh, quite a number of Srimad uh, uh, Bhagavatam set, set to the colleges and some, some of the students and lecturers, uh, we are cultivating them to go and read and do some of the uh, taking part in our program. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Good to hear. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, let's hear from group number four. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, everyone. Please accept my humble obeisances. So, um, the translation of the verse that we are supposed to talk on is O oh, sages, I have been just being questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's wealth. Well, the questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. In this whole translation and uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada uses the word Krishna 11 times. And we can see Prabhupada uses this word Krishna very often in all of his writings. So it's pretty clear that of all the purposes that Srila Prabhupada has, the main purpose is bringing people closer to Krishna. That's the main goal. That's the goal of Srimad Bhagavatam. The final subject of Srimad Bhagavatam is Ashray Tattva, and that is Krishna, the Samambona. And Prabhupada once mentioned that the, the, the desire of a sadhu is that everyone should become happy. Sarve Supina Bhavantu. And here the sage, Sud Goswami, is saying that the questions that you have asked completely satisfy the self. So Srila Prabhupada is mentioning in the translation and the purport that everyone in this world is looking for that satisfaction. Whatever inquiries they make, whatever questions they ask, whether it is in political front, it's a business venture, it's related to a scholarship, it's related to studies, or it's related to fulfilling the material needs and demands, it's about satisfying oneself. And the only way they can satisfy themselves is by knowing Krishna, by serving Krishna, by understanding Krishna. So the, it's, it was mentioned, how does this verse tell us about Prabhupada's mission? This verse very directly tells us that the whole purpose of Prabhupada's mission is bringing people closer to Krishna and helping them understand Krishna. And Srimad Bhagavatam does that. Thank you, Maharaj. So, isn't the Srimad Bhagavatam more about Vishnu than Krishna? Sorry? Isn't the Srimad Bhagavatam more focused on Vishnu rather than Krishna? No, Maharaj. It's focused on Krishna and all the incarnations of Krishna. But all the cantos, they seem to be about Vishnu and his incarnations. But then if you go to Canto 10, it presents the absolute truth and complete. The other forms of Vishnu are also coming from Krishna. And they tell us about Krishna's different aspects because Krishna is the complete absolute whole. When we talk about Vishnu, it is also understanding Krishna only. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that. Okay. We'll go ahead. Let's see. Where are we? Here we are. Um, okay. There is a need 
There is a need of a clue as to how humanity can become one in peace, friendship and prosperity with a common cause. Srimad Bhagavatam will fill this need for it is a cultural presentation for the respiritualization re of the entire human society from the preface in Srimad Bhagavatam. So there's a need to re-spiritualize the human society. Human society has become practically animal society. We're simply living like animals. We just simply engage in the animalistic activities. So there's a great need for re-spiritualization, to try to bring back what we have lost. So that is the need of Srimad Bhagavatam. We're going to look at the third verse, which describes something about the Srimad Bhagavatam. Nigama kaupa taror galitam palam, shukamukad amrita drava samyatam, bibata bhagavatam rasamalayam mohuraho rashika bhavi bhavukaha. Nigama kaupa taror, Vedic literature, right? The nigama kaupa taror, kaupa taror, the desired tree. So the Vedas are like a tree, right? And the galitam palam, the fully mature fruit, the mature fruit is this Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. That is actually Srimad Bhagavatam. It is the ripened fruit. The trees are, val the trees are nice, but they're more valuable when there's a fruit. You have a fruit, the trees are very valuable. Just like now in mango season, if you have some mangoes on the tree, trees are valuable. When there's no mangoes, they don't care very much, but as soon as the fruits are there. So the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is a very special fruit of the, Shrima, of the Vedic literature. It's very special because it's Galitam Phalam, it's fully matured. You get a nice ripe fruit and it's all juice, very sm practically no stone and no skin, a very thin skin. So that is a really relishable fruit, fully matured. Srimad Bhagavatam is like that. It's all relishable. It's uh, very palatable because Shukamukadamrita, it's coming from the lips, the nectarian lips of Shuka. Shukadeva Goswami, from the lips. Uh, and it, the, the name Shuka is appropriate because just like the parrot, the parrot will always select the tastiest fruit. If you find a fruit which has been pecked by the beak of the parrot, you find that's a very sweet and very relishable fruit. So in the same way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is all the more relishable because it comes from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami. And that was why even uh, the Sukadeva's father, Vyasadeva, and Vyasadeva's guru, Narada, that they also came to hear Sukadeva Goswami speak. Because his speaking was so enlightening that it drew Vyasadeva and Narada Muni, both of them, they came to hear Shukadev speak and they were taking pleasure in hearing the nectar coming from the lips of Shuka. So Prabhupada points out that parrot, usually we say, oh, if you just parrot something, you just repeat. You, you repeat verbatim. You just, whatever you hear, you repeat. But Shukadev didn't do that. Shukadev imparted his full realization. And he presented it in, in such a manner that it was so pleasing and so relishable to the audience, particularly to Maharaj Parikshit. So, this is the important points about the Srimad Bhagavatam, that it is the essence, uh, the ripened fruit of the Vedas. Why is it the ripened fruit of the Vedas? Because it's fully condensed with ras. The ras which is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is that ras which makes it all the more relishable. And that is what the devotees take pleasure in hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam because of the 
very concentrated right field there in the Srimad Bhagavatam Goswami. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam. Relish the juice. Relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? We want to relish this rasa. Of course, we're not very expert in relishing rasa because we're, you know, we're new devotees. We're, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty neophyte. I don't really know much about rasa. But that is where the real nectar is. And those great devotees, they take great pleasure in hearing about the rasas which are exchanged here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is full of this juice, this ras. From the purport of the third verse, the first chapter, first canto, in this sloka it is definitely stated that spiritual rasa, which is relished even in the liberated stage, can be experienced in the literature of the Srimad Bhagavatam due to its being the ripened fruit of all Vedic knowledge. By submissively hearing this transcendental literature, one can attain the full pleasure of his heart's desire. The full pleasure of our heart's desire. Our heart's desire, actually, we desire to experience and to taste this wonderful loving exchange which is there. So we can see uh, in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam this uh, rasa is revealed to us, spiritual rasa, the wonderful rasa between Lord Krishna and his devotees. So we'll just ask you one if, can you identify one verse or passage that appears to speak to you directly? It seems just relevant to you, your current situation. And write down one thing you could do based on that to improve your spiritual life. All right? Do you think you, you can do that? Try to just focus for a minute. One verse. Give us one verse that appears to speak to you directly. One verse, maybe a passage, something which really gets to you. That's just what we needed to hear. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to think about this. And reflect on what we have covered in these few chapters. I hope there's something there which really appeals to you. I particularly like the statement which comes at the end of the third chapter where they're discussing about the Srimad Bhagavatam. Is it the third chapter? I think so. Uh, maybe it's the second chapter. Anyway, but no, the third chapter. Where uh, they talk about controlling the mind, what we have to do to focus on Srimad Bhagavatam and how to control the mind. And uh, Prabhupada writes there that one's mind cannot be pure if one is not pure in action. And one cannot be pure in action if he's not pure in eating, sleeping, mating and defending. And, 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 but still, Prabhupada says, that if somehow or other one begins to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, then he can develop a taste for this transcendental literature. So Prabhupada was describing to us how we can control the mind if we are very careful, regulated, sense controlled, in our activities, we'll keep our mind free from disturbances. Pure actions means the mind will be peaceful. And we can hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So that was a purport of Srimad Bhagavatam.
All right. Would anyone like to share with me your realization? Did you pick up on any one particular verse or passage? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaji. Uh, according to me, uh, the for answer to the first one will be text number 10. Prayanu Alpush Alpayashu Sabhya Kala Vasmina Yuge Yana. Manda Sumanda Mateo Manda Bhakya Upadjuta. So, Maharaj, uh, I think uh, my own realization is that uh, I can feel that I I get demotivated many times. Uh, I, I get uh, uh, influenced by the modes of uh, maybe passion more frequently. So, that's why, uh, frankly speaking, that's why I have taken this course to keep myself on, on, on the... Uh, spiritual on the correct path of spiritual life and uh, the second one uh, the second one, answer to the second one is uh, text number 16 sadhu sangha that is shushrusha shraddhayana vasudeva katha ruchi uh, uh, by i think that by doing devotional service to the devotees i can keep myself on the right uh, path of the spiritual life Oh, thank, thank you. you thank you very much, Dameshwari Maharaji. All right, Dina Bandhu Prabhu. Uh, is it, no, Dina Nath. Dina Nath Prabhu has his hand up. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, so, similar to what Mataji said, I mean, my, uh, the verse that I would select is verse number 16. Uh, uh, Surusho, Sraddha, uh, Nashya, Vasudeva, Kataruchi. Because uh, by serving the devotees of the, I mean, it is said that the devotees of the Lord are more merciful uh, than the Lord. So by serving the devotees of the Lord, uh, you know, one gets the qualities of the devotees and it helps, uh, it would help me, uh, for, you know, to, to be in a better position to understand uh, the Bhagavatam and understand the scriptures. So I think serving the devotees of the Lord would be my takeaway uh, from this session. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Serving the devotees of the Lord. Thank you. Chitta Hari Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I was thinking that 1.2.18, that Nashta Prayasha Vandreshu, Nityam Bhagavad Sevaya, Bhagavad Yutam Shloki Bhakti Bhavati Nashtati. So I was feeling that my um, Bhagavadam study is not so good. Uh, so that's why uh, I read in that, that combination of these two Bhagavatas, Bhum Bhagavata and the Vakti Bhagavata will help the neophyte devotees to make progress on and on. So personally, one of the reasons I took up this course is this, so that I can regularly study Bhagavatam and increase my taste for reading Shri Bhagavatam more and more. So I will try to uh, apply it and make some schedule and sit to read Bhagavatam more. Oh, very good. Yes, certainly you have to be reading more to keep up with the class. Very nice. And so yes, it's, it's certainly it's good. It helps you to keep reading regularly. So thank you, Prabhu. And then uh, Diksha Maharaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. He said, Papa, I'm going to say answers. Maharaj, in, the, in text 6, Purpur Prabhupada mentions that uh, to hear and explain them is more important than reading them. One can assimilate the knowledge of the real scriptures only by hearing and explaining. So, uh, so I take this point home that. I have to uh, increase my shravanam and for that purpose I uh, I joined this Bhakti Web of course also to increase my shravanam and uh, to apply this shravanam then in preaching. So uh, I take this point home to take it very very nicely from my spiritual from the spiritual leaders and then apply it and spread through the through preaching. Okay, thank you Maharaji. Good. And then Devadatta Prabhu. Yeah, is it Devadatta? Prabhu, you have to unmute. Devadatta Yes, no, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm audible now? Yes, yes, now we can hear you. Okay. What's the purpose of this two are very important? I feel this uh, text number 18 is very important to me. It says, uh, Nishtaparashu Abhadrashu means 
uh, have to attend the Bhagavatam classes regularly and uh, by it you have, to, you have to render service to the devotees and by doing so the all our troublesome to the heart is almost completely vanquished. So uh, our, our heart is always full of impurities. But when you hear about the Bhagavatam classes by going there regularly, so our heart is cleansed and uh, the pure love of God will be established. Sorry. Thank you, Prabhu. Right? And, and Rati Prada Mataji? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, the verse that uh, I like is that uh, Tadara just the Mubhava, Kama Lupa, the Yaschaye, Cheta Eta Ranavidam, Satam Satpe Prasidati. Uh, the effects of the lower modes of passion and ignorance, lust, desire, and hankering disappear from the heart. The mind is unaffected due to being established in goodness, and one becomes completely happy. So, I really like this. This touches me that uh, I can actually feel that you know um, the effects become uh, you know uh, they are the while reading Srimad Bhagavatam and also while thinking about the past time of the Lord from Srimad Bhagavatam, while thinking of the classes, uh, mind becomes unaffected to other things. Uh, usually mind wavers from here to there, but once we are uh, fixed in reading Srimad Bhagavatam in a regular schedule, then it is really very nice and we feel that we are happy. <laughs> yes, very good. Yes, it's very attractive to think, get free of passion and ignorance. We need to do that. Definitely. We don't need all that Raja and Tamagun. So it's very nice you're thinking about this. All right. Someone else has their hand up here. Is it? Who is it? Nitya? What is the name? Nitai Nateshwar. Myself, Mabuji. Oh, Nitai Nateshwar. Yes. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. So the verse what I felt uh, very close uh, to the need of my current situation is uh, Tasmad ekena manasa bhagwan satvatam pati shrotavya kirti tavyascha dhyaya pujascha nityada. So why I feel this is uh, the need of my of my time for now is because the goal, the aim has to be very, very strong. So then all our resources we can utilize in achieving that. So Srila Prabhupada also mentions very nicely in the purport. Very strong uh, first two lines, first line of the purport is if realization of absolute truth is the ultimate aim of life, it must be carried out by all means. So various impediments will be there, uh, you know, various uh, problems will be there in the life, but our aim, if it is fixed, then we should achieve it by all means. So I think this is a very, very inspiring verse and, and uh, very helpful to me. And also the last line of this uh, purport, the tendency to glorify others or hear others must be turned to real object of glorification. The supreme being you know so again we we have this habit of glorifying we we we, we hear so many things but then if we just doubt that to the supreme being that will bring the real uh, change in our heart you know uh, still long way to go but i think the goal has to be made very clear very specific so that we we bind our all resources in one direction and try to achieve that so i feel this is very very uh, important for me right now to fix my goal and you know ensure that I work on that direction. And what was that verse again, Prabhu? Which verse was that? This was 1.2.14. Tasma ekena manasa. Oh, 2.14. Uh huh. Yeah. Tasma ekena manasa. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank okay. Much. Uh, 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 was there any other hands up who didn't speak yet? Okay. We'll go ahead, let me see, we just finish off here. Mm. Uh. Oh. <laughs> okay, just a quick question. What has been your experience while studying and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam during one of this, during unit one of this course? What has been your experience while studying and hearing? Well, I hope it's been some benefit to you. Certainly it's been benefit to me to review it, all of this again. Long time since I went through this before. It was very refreshing for me to go back through it again. There's so much nectar, there's so much important information, valuable preaching there. I certainly benefited a lot by reviewing it all again. 
Okay. So let's have a look at the objectives. We, st we spoke about the importance of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam with reference to verses 12 up to 22. All right. We pointed out the progression which is there from different stages, beginning of course from Shrad up to Prima. So this is there in these 10 verses, 12 to 22. You can see all the different levels of devotion are described. There is a progression. So we want to understand the progression and how we, point, uh, we should understand how to achieve this progression through the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then we were speaking about Prabhupada's uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, the role which the Bhagavatam... Yeah. Ah, so we were, we were speaking about the role of the Bhagavatam in the mission of Prabhupada in those particular verses which we focused on. Certainly Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam is fully focused on Krishna and giving the message of Krishna consciousness. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is... Uh, Prabhupada dedicated so much of his time to writing it and uh, he pushed the devotees also to publish it, to get the books published. Uh, the Chaitanya Charitamrita is actually a, like a commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Points which are there in Srimad Bhagavatam are all explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And so uh, it, it, it's so important for us. Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada said, was like the beginning knowledge, and then Srimad Bhagavatam is a graduate knowledge, and Chaitanya Charitamrita was like postgraduate study. So Prabhupada was, his mission was to educate us in the, the science of Krishna, and it's, everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, if there's no other books, it's not a great loss, so long as there's Srimad Bhagavatam. All right, and then preaching, the analogy of the Vedas compared to a desire tree, Srimad Bhagavatam compared to the ripened fruit, and Sukadev Goswami compared to the parrot, with reference to 113 verse and purport. So this is important for us to understand the relationship between the Vedas, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sukadeva Goswami speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes people uh, have difficulty understanding. We get different scholars. They know the Bhagavad Gita and they know the Vedas. Not many are familiar with the Srimad Bhagavatam and they don't really understand the connection. The Srimad Bhagavatam begins where the Bhagavad Gita stops. The Bhagavad Gita stopped with surrender to Krishna. So Srimad Bhagavatam begins from that point, that now that we've surrendered to Krishna, we should go on and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is the actual fruit. Huh? And then we've ref reflected on our own experience of relishing Srimad Bhagavatam with reference to 113 appreciating Sukadeva Goswami's preaching, powerful preaching. He's uh, giving this very concentrated rasa of the pastimes of Krishna to all of us, that we want to develop our taste and appreciation. Of course, it takes time for us to, we're just entering into the ocean the ocean of Srimad Bhagavatam is so deep, there's so much. We're just like waiting in the shore. We're just beginning our study of Srimad Bhagavatam. But we want to go on and appreciate it more and more and go deeper and deeper. And so it's inspiring to think this is how Lord, Lord Chaitanya would hear Srimad Bhagavatam. The Goswamis, how much they studied, they relished Srimad Bhagavatam. So we're following in the footsteps, and particularly Srila Prabhupada, who has spent so much time to write his purports to give us Srimad Bhagavatam. 
we want to develop our appreciation for that. Prabhupada writes, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is a sublime literature which surpasses all other Vedic scriptures due to its transcendental qualities. It is transcendental to all mundane activities and mundane knowledge. Srimad Bhagavatam is not only a superior literature, but is the ripened fruit of all Vedic literatures. In other words, it is the cream of all Vedic knowledge. Considering all this, patient and submissive hearing is definitely essential. With great respect and attention, one should receive the message and lessons imparted by the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? This is actually our last class in this unit. Right? We've covered the first three chapters. So if you have any questions, then now is the time. Bring them up. Because you have to prepare now for your CBA, right? Closed book assessment. And you, of course you also have to work on your open book assessment, if you have not already done it. Did you do it already, Diksha? No, Maharaj. Oh, Diksha, yeah. Don't leave it till the last. Get it done early because you got to prepare for the closed book. You know, so if you're still working on the open book, then it's hard to get, get yourself prepared for the closed book. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, Maharaj, I have a question. Um, like it is mentioned uh, in the second word that Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. So Vyasade is writing is the author of the book and he is, is he referring to himself by writing this that Mahamuni Krite, that he himself is the Mahamuni who wrote this? Yes. <laughs> That's right, he's describing himself. <laughs> He is Mahamuni Krite. Also, Maharaj, can you please guide us how how do we go about preparing for the closed book assessment? If you can give us some tips. For what? The open book? For the closed book assessments. Oh, oh, the, the, close, the closed book assessments. You have to read the questions. You have to answer them. Actually, you should have answered these questions before before coming to the classes, even before you begin the course. It's, you know, the idea is we give out the, the student uh, materials before the course begins, so that in your own time, before the classes begin, you've already gone through these questions, because the questions are all taken, the answers are all there in the purports. You just have to pick out the right answers from the purports and you have the answers to the questions. So it's not really a lot of work, but it just requires some time. You have to go through the purports and pick out the answers to these questions and be familiar with these things. We, we were... Initially, when we began the Bhakti by Bab, the idea was that let the students do all the questions first. And then when they come for the course, then they're already prepared, they've already answered these questions and, and they, then they can just constantly, and, and even the slokas, the slokas also, you know, if they've already memorized the slokas as well, then they don't have a lot of work to do. Then they can concentrate more on hearing the classes and participating in the classes and then also writing their essays. So the, the closed book questions, these, these are, this is quite straightforward stuff. The material is all there. There's, you don't have to do a lot of research or anything. You just take the answers out from the purports. And, 
And so okay. Yes. Hmm. I have a question. Yes. yes. Maharaj, uh, in verse 1 to 13, we discussed today, we understood that the goal of life is to keep the personality of Godhead. Whether you are in any Varna or Ashram, the goal of life is to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, so I want to ask this question that uh, for a girl when she enters Grahastha Ashram, so uh, the life is completely uh, changed because like she has a lot of responsibilities. So Maharaj Bhagavatam is, uh, in Bhagavatam we see many successful stories. But in Kali Yuga, I, I have been seeing my so many friends who are getting married and getting divorced. So my I myself, uh, I read Bhagavatam, but I don't get convinced of this principle that will this marriage is the only thing that will, uh, this marriage is the another way of like, how will this ashram protect me when after going in marriage, the things are becoming so disturbing that I'm not able to please Vishnu. Like, goal of life is to please Vishnu. But see, in Kali Yuga, there is very less tolerance and everything. So, so I, I when I, I was just reading this verse, as you mentioned today, so I was just reflecting on this uh, one point. So please, can you give some light on this point? Well, your married life is also for pleasing Vishnu. It's not something separate from the service of Vishnu. You have to understand your married life in that way, that it's a part of your duty, it's a service to the Lord. You get married and you live in a family, have a family life. And so that, that is part of devotional service. It's not something separate from service to Krishna. So you have to have confidence in, you know, as a woman, you have a duty like that. And there's no reason to have doubts about it and no think, well, well, I don't know about this and that, you know. You, you, that's not the way to go into family life, you know. You have to understand properly. Of course, marriage has to be proper and you arrange for a proper, you know, qualified man, devotee husband. So it's not such a big problem for you. I mean, so many people are married. Why are you so worried about it? But there are there are uh, successful stories, but see many unsuccessful stories also, which is like very difficult to see them coming back. So the thing is that uh, that is very displeasing to my heart that. <laughs> So will my relation, like it is not there yet, but the thing keeps on uh, lurking in my mind that it's a big thing in my life. It would be a big thing in my life. So will that help me in my, uh, in my duty to serve Krishna or not? Well, definitely it should. Yes. You have to understand that, that just being a wife, that is part of a duty to Krishna. It's your ashram that you go through. The Sri Ashram. And so yes, it's, it's, it's a duty to Krishna. To live in Krishna consciousness with a, 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 another man, then we want to show the example of ideal family life. That is Krishna consciousness. You want to show an example to other people how to live. You say so many people are not successful, so you should be confident that you will show the example of success. You, won't, you, you don't reflect on all the failures, but you should think, I want to show people a success of family life, the good example. So that's required. We need devotees, devotee couples to show the example to everyone how to live successfully in family life, in Krishna consciousness, and to make spiritual progress. Thank you so much for that. 
Yes, somebody else has a hand up here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Prabhu Pranam. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, the first question was from 1.1.1 uh, and the, 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 the word says Anvaya Dittarat, these two words are coming. So, uh, direct and indirect, directly, <coughs> direct and indirectly, right? Anvaya Dittarat Shat, Artheshu Abhigyaha. So, uh, Maharaj, these two, what is the meaning of these two words actually? Uh, I could, I will not, in the, in the, in the, in the whole class, I could not understand these two words myself when I'm reading it. So, uh, what is the actual, actual meaning of Anvaya Tetarat uh, in, in this context, in this, in this, in this verse? Oh, in the first verse, directly and indirectly. Yes, yes, yes Maharaj. Uh -huh. Well, you have to go through the Prabhupada's purport. You didn't get satisfaction from Prabhupada's purport there? I tried to read it, but how um, actually, uh, um, actually, Lord, uh, you know, actually, Lord uh, takes, uh, uh, you know, uh, takes the knowledge uh, of every jiva. Uh, directly and indirectly. And the, the, the analogy which uh, Prabhupada gives is pretty clear, but but, uh, 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 but but from the point of view of Lord's context or Lord's, uh, you know, uh, knowing uh, everything indirectly, oh, how can we, how can I understand that? Uh, I could not clearly, uh, you know, getting the point there. Yes, it's uh, not an easy topic to actually say we fully realize everything. Uh, let me see. Uh, we do have... You know, if you have a copy of the book by Barry John Prabhu, Unveiling His Lotus Feet, it's very helpful. And he does touch on a lot of topics which are not always so clear in Prabhupada's books. Have you heard of okay, that? Okay, Have you heard of that book? Unveiling the Lotus Feet? It's... Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh-huh. So if you can get hold of a copy of that book, then within that book, then Barijan Prabhu gives a lot of quotations from Jiva Goswami, and Jiva Goswami is uh, quoted in from many of his, the writings of his Sandarbhas. Jiva Goswami wrote six Sandarbhas, so but from the Sandarbhas he deals with a lot of the questions which come up from the reading of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he tries to uh, make things a bit... I'd have to prepare for myself for that question, Prabhu. Maybe you can give me your email and I can reply to you on an email. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Maharaj, can we get the answer in the group if it is possible? All right. Yes. Okay. That would, we'll do it in the group. Yes. So I'll give you an explanation in the group. That will be better. Then everyone can have the... You can see uh, the there is one more, uh, one more um, doubt uh, or a question, Maharaj. Uh, in the second verse, uh, the word Kritibiha Shushu um, Shubhi, the um, word meaning which Shri Prabhupada gives is uh, culture about Shushu Shubhi. And uh, uh, so from from the purport, um, uh, it's, it's not when, when on, in the class he said that or, uh, you know, from the uh, Sandarbhas, we got to know that uh, by just uh, 
क्रिएटिंग द डिजायर टू रीड भागवतम इज सुशुशुभि तो इट इट इज इट इज द मीनिंग व्हाट व्हाट इज द एग्जैक्ट हाउ यू नो व्हाट व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कल्चर व्हेन श्री प्रभुपाद गिव्स द मीनिंग ऑफ सुशुशुभि इन दिस वर्ड what's the meaning of culture when prabhupad gives the meaning yes 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 maharaj well prabhupad explains culture refers to many different aspects of society which include things like religion art music drama there are all different aspects of culture and so it can be a so, very, it can be a very general term it can be very broad so how this uh, by this meaning the lord can appear in the heart tatakshana without any delay so how this is connecting with this verse mr maharaj uh, to uh so should, should be tatakshana that is which verse again uh next verse my 1.1.2 or second verse right uh uh the how, last words how, how can it be that the lord appears in the heart yes maharaj and in some uh, explanations we read that uh, this means uh, a person who uh, creates desire to read shrimad bhagavatam is like is the meaning of prithviya shushushubhi yes right the desire to hear the desire to read shrimad bhagavatam right is that the meaning of creating the culture is that the meaning of creating the culture the it could be the prabhupad is referring to the culture of reading shrimad bhagavatam is that what uh, okay. is that what you see yes 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 ma'am uh huh yes that's right the culture of reading shrimad bhagavatam that is the, the second verse is glorifying the shrimad bhagavatam and we're being encouraged to okay. read the shrimad bhagavatam so that we want to develop that culture of hearing the shrimad bhagavatam the sushru should be that was the important word uh, in that verse and probably mentions that word in the purport doesn't he he talks about this eagerness to hear okay thank you so much maharaj it was really nice uh, experience and you know really great you know uh, experience uh, uh, hearing uh, bhagavatam verses from and explanations and um, the propad um, selected quotes uh, related to each verse it was really nice really nice and it was it was uh, you know uh, out of world experience for me thank you so much maharaj thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna yes prabhu there's another hand up here is it prabhu I have a general question about uh, Shastra Chakshu, seeing the world through Shastra. Sometimes questions like that come used to come in Bhakti Shastra and also now in Bhakti Vibha. Today as well, you asked me about different peace movements, something like that. Yeah. For me, I grew up in Mayapur. I was born in Mayapur, oh. so I don't really know much about the outside world. So I sort of struggle with these questions. Oh, Should okay. <laughs> I try to like read the newspaper more, or how do I answer these questions? No, you you just read Shrimad Bhagavatam. You get everything there. Don't worry about it. No, these questions are not important. But if you've read Shrimad Bhagavatam, that's the main thing. We just want to know Shrimad Bhagavatam and try to relate everything to Shrimad Bhagavatam. So. peace is also there in shrimad bhagavatam okay thank you very much 
and, and we're in Srimad Bhagavatam, we get a lot of war stories. We've got Krishna fighting the demons and so many different battles with Lord Shiva and so on. Ban when he went to Banas kingdom, and we do hear a lot of war there. <laughs> but it's all transcendental battles. So, even in the, on, the, on the transcendental level, there's, there's, there's wars, there's conflicts, and <laughs> but ultimately it's all peaceful and Krishna is always victorious. So, so long as we're on the side of Krishna, we'll always be victorious. And that's stated at the end of the Bhagavad Gita. Wherever there is Krishna and Arjuna, there will be victory, morality, extraordinary power and opulence. So just always be on Krishna's side and then you're, you've nothing to worry about. Thank oh. you, ma'am. All right. Yes, uh, I had this one question uh, from the CBA I wanted to ask because I, I was thinking about a big, big answer to this. I'm not able to frame a single line. Like for the question, explain how the impersonalist philosophers have given indirect imp impetus to mundane sex life. So for this, what can be the uh, answer? Like what I understood from Shla Prabhupada's purport 111, the last paragraph was that material sex life is a perverted reflection of the original fact because the original fact is absolute truth and he is person. So how the impersonalists are giving this as an indirect impetus to mundane sex life? <laughs> Well, how are they giving impetus to indirect to sex life from this? Uh, because they're refuting, they're denying the spiritual aspect of life, the pure nature of sex life. They don't admit that there is such a thing as a spiritual world and there is pure love. So they, they just simply think only of the mundane world. That there's no, ex they have no knowledge, no information of any kind of transcendental love on the spiritual platform. They don't believe in rasa because they're impersonalists. There's no rasa, there's no relationship, there's no love there in the spiritual world. So for them, it's all material. The material world is all in all. And so they, they want to, they're encouraging people and enjoying the material world because they don't recognize that there is actually pure love. And you want to understand pure love, we have to be pure ourselves. So because they deny the spiritual world and the spiritual activities and the Lord and his relationship with his devotees, so people are encouraged in the mundane world to enjoy the perverted reflection. It's like that. Because the nature of the soul is to want to enjoy. So how do they enjoy? They think they will enjoy the material world because they think ultimately there's only the oneness. There's no enjoyment in the material. They think the spiritual world there's only the oneness. So we should enjoy here. In the material world. Thank you, Maharaj. And Maharaj, one more question was from the uh, identify three level of occupational duties. So uh, while I was reading one 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 two eight, the chapter Divinity and Divine Service, in this there are uh, occupational activities mentioned on the level of gross and the gross level and extended selfishness. I can point out uh, the levels of occupational duties in this in this entire uh, verse. So, what is the meaning of levels of occupational duties? Oh, the levels of occupational duties. There, there, there is a purport there about that with different levels of occupational duties. And Prabhupada describes the different, three different levels of occupational duties. It's in the purport of that verse. Did you read the purport? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, I read the purport, but I could not get clear if anybody else in the class can also help that. I could not understand the levels because 
it is given that the uh, cross there is a concentrated selfishness and selfishness and extended selfishness and occupational activities are limited to concentrated and extended so there are two type of activities one is limited to concentrated selfishness and other to extended selfishness yes Mataji, probably the answer is karmi jnani and devotee that's a three level of occupational <laughs> there you are okay ma'am i could Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will finish here. Is that right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. And I'll put in the chat to reply to Prabhu's question. Any other questions you want to answer? Are you okay? <laughs> All right, so wish you good luck, take care, have a nice time studying Bhakti Vaibha. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.